All right, so here we have Zero Caliber. It's a first-person shooter, and I just got it last night. And just kind of a heads up right off the bat, so this is an early access game, 25 bucks. Uh, so there's going to be some stuff that's not complete, but I'm not going through a full campaign. I just basically went through the tutorial and did part of the first mission to get a, a feel, a first impression of how the game feels and just what the gameplay is going to be like, and that's kind of what this video is about. So through the initial setup, it sets up your graphics options, and for some reason it wanted to do very low graphics settings, so I changed it to Ultra, and um, it's I believe it uses the Unreal Engine. Uh, I don't know if it's Unreal 4 or not. I didn't pay attention to the, the startup, but this is my processor and everything. I'm using a B450M uh, gaming board, a Tough uh, Plus gaming board, and these numbers here are in Ultra, and they're all the max numbers playing the game on a 2080 Ti, so uh, it did really well. Uh, didn't peg the card or really put any kind of strain on it at all. I did skip uh, most of the beginning parts of the tutorial, uh, except for the range and the first part of the first mission, just because nobody wants to watch you learn how to move. So just a reminder, this is an early access version of the game, so some things may not stay. Uh, like hopefully these tooltips that are constantly in your face and popping up and don't seem to go away. Uh, that's one of the things I immediately noticed and did not like about this game. I believe the graphics engine is Unreal and I'm pretty sure it's probably Unreal 4. Uh, if not, uh, the graphics are are decent for VR and um, you know, they kind of look like 10-year-old graphics on an old PC game and stuff, but uh, for VR, they're they're pretty decent. Uh, they're not quite Asgard's Wrath graphics, uh, the attention to detail and whatnot, and maybe some of that will change. Again, this is early access, uh, like for lighting and everything. But as far as that's concerned, they're they're pretty decent. They're, they're good enough. Uh, my main concern is the gameplay. One of the things I didn't really like very much at all immediately was just the way the gun mechanics were. As you can see here, I'm constantly grabbing the wrong thing and, you know, with all the little pieces of the, the gun highlighting, like the charge handle and magazine and, you know, the hand rest and everything, it just, I don't know, it, it felt kind of kind of cheesy or incomplete. I, I don't know how to explain it, but it just... Um, I had a lot of trouble getting things to feel fluid. Um, as you can see here, I, I never was able to get my rest hand put on the rifle. And so, and I think that's because the tutorial wants me to do it in their order. So, that could possibly have been it here. One plus I will give the game is the sound quality is really, really good. I, the sound quality is awesome uh, so far. The, it's very clean. It's very crisp. Um, the direction and everything in, in the headset uh, feels very good. It's The sound quality is so far my favorite thing of this game at this point. So what I'm doing here is I thought I put the hollow side on backwards by accident, um, which I, I'm sitting here trying to figure out how to flip it around, but then I realized later that it was actually put on the right way. I'm just kind of used to the long end being on the back side on real hollow sights. I don't think I've ever had one on the front side like that, but as you can see here, the attachments and everything are just kind of, I almost feel like it's a novelty. Um, putting them on and whatnot, they just kind of put themselves on, uh, but it is kind of giving you some interaction and whatnot, but it does feel kind of kind of cheap, uh, very arcade-like, and uh, as I got through a little bit more in the game, it, it just kind of felt a little more like a like an arcade shooter instead of like a first-person battle simulator type game, kind of like Pavlov and, and uh, H3VR. Scope. You can adjust your magnet. 
amplification to zoom in on faraway targets. So these tooltip pop-ups, man, these things were just really starting to drive me nuts at this point. Uh, not very far into the game, and I was already getting just really kind of burned already on having to deal with that stuff. Uh, I almost kind of hung the game up and just was going to come back to it later. But I decided I, I wanted to get through this tutorial and actually see what a mission feels like. So the grenades were, um, I had a little bit of trouble with the grenades and I'm going to skip through because it, it actually took me like a good two or three minutes to get these two targets and then all the extra targets taken down with grenades. They, the grenades are work very strangely, I guess you could say. They they have no weight to them, but, but then all of a sudden they kind of do. They um, kind of like a throwing a grenade in Pavlov. You could practically throw it across the map and then you have the grenades in H3 VR which you know you almost have to have somebody come help you throw it to get it to go anywhere so uh, with the tooltip in my face and everything I just I wanted to get this part over with so I'm going to skip it so you don't have to suffer like I did here oh my god get out of my face tooltips So you might see just um, a little bit of hanging up and lag or, you know, some some frame rate glitches. And that was because I'm, of course, streaming this through virtual desktop wirelessly. And I was actually in the middle of a big download as well. Um, so that could have affected a little bit of my bandwidth and whatnot. Uh, so please pardon that. So now we're getting into kind of the moment of truth on whether or not uh, I like this game. And again, I had to keep reminding myself that this was um, an early access game. Uh, but it is a game that I paid for regardless. And I was kind of already 50-50 with this. Uh, it just wasn't feeling very immersive. It, it felt very much like a, just kind of a, an arcade type game. And... I know some people would want to say, well, you know, your most games are kind of arcade style, and um, but you know, just just little things like the little controller icons being up there in the way, and and all that stuff. And I'm looking for something that has a little more of a a real feel to it, if at all possible. And this one was already kind of straying away from that. So here I discover, as you can see, that I can't seem to grab my pistol unless I'm actually having to look down at the holster to grab it. And I don't know if maybe it's because I have to be exactly precise to get a hold of my pistol uh, or anything in the holster, or if it actually does not work uh, unless you're looking at it. And um, later on I had this same problem where I kept having to look down to grab the items off my belt. And uh, kind of wasn't digging that at all. So this is the part I couldn't wait to get to. Uh, I saw some, some M4s laying on the ground over here, and I'm a huge fan of the M4. It's what I trained with uh, for a while, and I also have a an AR myself, a couple of them, and it's just my favorite rifle and very comfortable with it. So 
kind of wanted to see how it felt in the game and uh, started getting really frustrated here because first of all the tool tips just oh man they just kept getting in my way and it was, uh, it was just killing it and these controller icons being up and again I'm thinking this is all part of the tutorial but I get all these attachments put on and I just couldn't seem to figure out why I couldn't progress or what was going on here and um, I ended up spending you know a minute or two trying to figure out how to get get moving on from this point I, I wasn't understanding what they were wanting if I had to equip all these weapons or put attachments on everything I don't know it was just getting to the point that uh, I was kind of already getting burned out I wanted to hurry up and get into a mission here so here I'm just gonna skip over all of the um, frustrating trying to figure out what the game wants from me at this point so here I just say screw it and start walking forward I've got this tool tip that won't leave me alone just up in my face and apparently I started the whole whatever it is the CQB training I'm supposed to do and honestly I didn't really get to do much here uh, because the I guess my teammate here just pretty much wiped out all the bad guys before I could do anything um, but with that tool tip on my face and um, seeing just kind of how this went, uh, the aim was kind of off. It just didn't feel very solid, very fluid. And at this point, I was already starting to kind of feel that buyer's remorse on the game. Like I didn't think it was going to um, pass my approval test here at this point. All right, so here we're starting our first mission and just kind of getting ready to go. And this is where uh, this was kind of the moment of truth for me to see exactly how this was going to go. Command, we're at the perimeter. Dahlia, how's Chicago looking? Not good. Main mission is to prevent the Taloki from slaughtering the rest of the civilians. They aren't the talkative types either. Negotiation is not an option. So apparently I missed what the storyline is. Uh, I guess it'll progress as we go and kind of learn. I, I don't know if you're supposed to read up on this. I, I didn't have anything in the tutorial about what's going on or anything like that or find out like a kind of a background as to what's going on. I'm, I'm assuming this is some kind of post-apocalyptic type of setting in the United States. Um, so I, I'm not quite sure what's going on here with, with all of that. So... Um, I guess I could read up on it. It could be an interesting storyline. Who knows? So something that kind of got me is like the voice acting in, I don't mean it's dull or bad or anything, but it's very, very unoriginal. It's, it's actually extremely common. You have that, that rustic military rough voiced guy. And then you have, of course, the female comms officer who the intelligence person who's relaying, uh, information to you and whatnot. And, I just feel like every single first person shooter that I've ever played in my life just about has this exact identical format and uh, it's just so unoriginal to me it's uh, it all I almost feel like it's like a made for children type of format and of course that's just my preference but it, it just kind of takes away from the unique feel to the game because it just feels like another first person shooter game to me. So these glowing parts on my rifle are just, man, they're just killing it for me here. It's just kind of taken away from the, any kind of realism. And of course, right here, I immediately realized uh, that I'm probably not going to like this game very much. And the aim seems to be okay, but it just immediately told me that this is a this is an arcade game. This is a, a put, almost put your quarters in and and keep going kind of thing um, you know you're gonna probably be fighting hordes of enemies uh, just a typical first person shooter which I'm not a huge fan of and this kind of reflects on what the gameplay for multiplayer would be like for this game and compared compared to Pavlov 
uh, VR, which I think is a very well put together game. Pavlov is more of like a almost like a simulator in a sense. It it is a, a first person shooter game, of course, uh, and it does have elements of that you're seeing here. But at the same time, it's it requires a little bit of skill and whatnot. This just feels like uh, just feels like a very basic typical game with a different storyline and a different map to me so the modeling probably needs some serious work here actually because it looks like I'm I have a broken arm here and I don't know if you saw earlier but when I look down at my belt uh, it looks like my my legs are all bent and broken so maybe that's something they'll be working on later on um, at this point, the game just is already not feeling like my style of play. And uh, may, some people may go, well, what in the hell are you expecting? It's a first-person shooter. Um, there's a big difference between this and other games that I enjoy playing. And as you can see here, this one has already just kind of lost my interest because it is so generic. And... Uh, I'm just kind of screwing around at this point. I'm not really taking it seriously. And um, when I'm when a game does that right off the bat, I just uh, I already know that it's it's going to be a bust for me at least at this point. So at this point, I'm trying to figure out what in the hell is going on here. Where this other bad guy's at uh, that I need to clear out. Uh, you know, I decided to pay attention. It turns out this guy is shooting through a boarded up window. As you'll see here in a second, I finally figure it out. And um, apparently I can't shoot back at him. So that was kind of a, a little glitch there. And like I've said before, hey, it's early access. There's going to be all kinds of little things like this. And I mean, technically, I guess you could shoot through that boarded up window. But, hey. So the fact that the coffee cups and soda cans aren't moving when I shoot them. Or, you know, blowing off the table says that there's not much for physics. And here, I wasn't really playing around. I was kind of seeing um, how the tracking is going. Because I'm actually with with the pistol off the, the field of view I was aiming kind of down towards the floor or kind of straight forward and moving my arm forward and it was actually uh, glitching I guess you could say in aiming the controller up to the ceiling so uh, this kind of told me that there's uh, some work that needs to be done with uh, the tracking as far as uh, that's concerned Again, at this point, um, I'm just not really digging the game very much, and uh, the the scaling and whatnot it also felt very off. Um, all the targets just seem very small. Um, it's kind of hard to explain, and you'll see here when I start firing this M4 that uh, there's a lot of uh, clipping. I was actually hitting in like an invisible rock here as you can see 
Uh, so there are some boundaries and uh, some scaling, and uh, not scaling, but uh, some modeling fixes that definitely need to be done uh, in this game already right off the bat. So. And again, the, the graphics aren't too bad. Um, I, I can see where they spend a lot of time on the, the character um, skins and whatnot. Um, these are the kind of graphics that it's kind of like um, my dad used to always say with cars uh, that had bad paint jobs. They, they look good from about 20 feet away. Uh, they look like a good paint job until you got close to it. And that's kind of how some of the skins and stuff are here. Uh, there is a little bit of attention to detail, uh, but there are some items that just kind of look like they're placed in and don't have this, that same level of detail that, or attention to detail that uh, other objects did. Uh, kind of like uh, a lot of different people were were doing the were doing the graphics and the and the skins for this game and the textures, and uh, all kind of had a different style of doing it. That's kind of what I saw right off the bat here. So. And yes, I just tried to butt stroke that guy just to see if it was possible. <laughs> So at this point I'm about to die and was looking forward to it so I could uh, get back to the main menu and go check and see if uh, multiplayer was a thing yet. And if it was and if multiplayer was decent then this game might be worth keeping. One feature I really do like about this game here is this interactive menu, main menu here. And uh, I've always liked these kinds of, of menus because you actually go to the points of interest instead of selecting it on a menu. So you kind of feel like you're in this headquarters base. So I thought that was really cool. And what I'm doing here is just kind of looking around and seeing what there is here. And I was also looking for a multiplayer or co-op. And I basically got my answer right here it wasn't quite finished or ready yet and honestly that was kind of it for me as far as uh, my interest in the game uh, I already just was not interested in the type of gameplay that it was uh, and again this is a preference of mine and I had already decided that um, obviously the gameplay is not going to change to anything that I might like so I just kind of figured uh, I would go ahead and hang it up and uh, see about getting a refund. So here I went ahead and just submitted the refund and um, just to kind of move on. And this is no discredit or anything to the developers. And I, I'm very glad that more and more people are becoming interested in making games for VR. Um, just as my personal preference, this wasn't something to my liking. Uh, compared to other first-person shooters that I've played and again this is early access it probably has a long ways to go which again I, I believe this game should have been uh, maybe a demo uh, as opposed to a $25 purchase because uh, it does have a ways to go